Welcome back to another Trade Rumor series. As today we are talking about the Chris Archer potential trade to the Minnesota Twins. And so, yeah, I mean, this is something that I saw on MLBTradeRumors.com. But, you know, neither team has really said much about it or made much about it. This is just a series that I just started with the John Carlos Stanton one. And that seemed to get a lot of support. And so, yeah, with the face cam, it's still not here until later on. But it will be back as soon as we just figure out how things end up going. And so, yeah, in terms of trade rumors, this is a rumor deal. Chris Archer, I mean, it's not really... It was just a name that I saw pop up in a list of Twins pitchers that they could go after. And so, yeah, Chris Archer getting traded to the Minnesota Twins. This guy's got excellent stuff. I mean... Irvin Santana had a pretty good season last year for the Twins. They won't show his stats if I look at them. If I look them up on here, yeah, this is just 2016. He did have a pretty good season, and so in terms of the rest of the rotation, not a lot here. I would probably well, I'm we'll see how it ends up being at the end of spring training, but the Twins do have a pretty solid rotation now and now that they have an actual ace who I mean his ERA is it was like at around four last year but his FIP was at like 340 and he's got excellent stuff so Chris Archer will be the bona fide ace of this roster compared to Irvin Santana he's definitely going to be the ace of this team over Irvin Santana so this would be a nice acquisition for them and in terms of the trade I'll put the trade up on the screen I had to maneuver around with it a little bit because there's just you can't you can't add more than three players per trade so yeah I just gave the twins some extra just random 27 year old prospect that isn't gonna do anything at all for his entire career so yeah, in terms of simulation, I'll see you at the middle of the season. Alright, so now we are at the middle point of a season, and, um, yeah, the Twins sit at mediocrity. <laughs> so, yeah, the Indians are starting to pull away, the Royals are looking alright, Tigers are not, the White Sox are hot garbage, hot garbage, and what? Nah. There's no way this happens. Look at this is... Guys are not going to be d terrible. They're not going to be terrible. Like MLB The Show seems to think. I'm going to be alright. At least mediocre. Be we'll be at least stuck in mediocrity next year. But, you know, MLB The Show doesn't know what they're talking about. Just like how they don't know what they're talking about. Well, I mean, Chris Archer... He has a 4.42 ERA, and so this doesn't really make much sense. I mean, his FIP is high. It's high as it's ever been. It's never been this high ever. Hasn't even been up above 4 for his entire career, because last season in real life, he had like a 3.40 FIP, like I said earlier. But I guess it's attributed to the fact that he plays in Minnesota, and now he faces right-handed hitters that succeed, because Minnesota does well for right-handed hitters compared to left-handers because Tropicana Field doesn't have right-handers succeed so I'm, as I'm looking at the charts right now but yeah I mean Chris Archer his war is only at 0.5 and not pitching like an ace Jose Barrios was actually doing really good earlier on in the season but there is a trade that has to be made considering that Phil Hughes is not happy with his role in Minnesota, so you can see him being dealt for somebody who, uh, somebody else who's on the block, Isaac Galloway or Destin Hood or something. I guess we'll go with Isaac Galloway. That's basically just some cost controlling move for the Twins, and just kind of like a salary dump type of trade, but also just to get rid of a guy that was unhappy with his role in Minnesota. And yeah, hopefully mediocrity doesn't sort of continue in Minnesota. I mean, I'd imagine that they'd probably make a move, but probably not. I mean, this is making the trade for Chris Archer kind of indicates that they're trying to be contenders because he, he'd be 29 in real life, and he'd have like three years left on his contract, so 
maybe they'll make a move. They wouldn't do too much, like, drastic per se, but... I mean, eventually they're probably gonna move on from from Jorge Polanco, considering that Nick Gordon is gonna be coming up. He's supposed to be really good, so there's that for the Minnesota Twins. We'll see how that goes. And in terms of the rest of the half of the season, we'll see how this goes. So the Twins have regressed in their next season after trading for Chris Archer, but... Miguel Sano absolutely crushed the baseball. He hit 56 home runs and thrived in Target Field. I, for some reason, I couldn't think of their stadium name for just a second. But yeah, Miguel Sano absolutely killed it. Look at that, 109 runs to, to go along with that. He just killed it. He absolutely killed it. He led in slugging percentage. He just crushed Look at that. Look at those power attributes. Look at that rating. 91 overall. 291, 378, 610. He absolutely raked. Miguel Sano just basically carried the offense from being just utter trash. He won MVP too. Look at that. <laughs> Miguel Sano won MVP in his... What? I mean, technically it's like his second full season in Major League Baseball. His rookie season, quote-unquote, was just like 80 games. He killed it there too but he won the MVP for the AL any other awards look at look at Matt Olson winning rookie of the year I mean I guess it would be rookie of the year but and like it A's got ourselves a bright future hopefully we can get Christian Yelich and of course getting silver slugger is Miguel Sano, and that's it. No other awards in terms of Chris Archer. The main piece going in this deal, well, he had to adjust to the target field. He had to adjust the target field, so his FIP went up, his highest of his career ever, and uh, his ERA was at a career high as well. No, not technically it wasn't, but that was a very, very small sample size. But his FIP was also very low, and you know, his whip hasn't been close to being that high since 2014. So I think that this is a pretty salt, small sample size if this were to be, if this were to happen in real life for Chris Archer, I think that you should take that season with a grain of salt. Kind of like with Zach Greinke, Zach Greinke's numbers fell off big time with his first season as a Diamondback because... Chase Field is a bigger, is a better hitter's park compared to Dodger Stadium. So yeah, I mean, take this with a grain of salt if this were to happen in real life. And that is if the Twins were even able to get Chris Archer, which is still a big question mark. So yeah, I mean, I think it would be a solid acquisition. The Twins regressing this bad, I, I don't know if this will happen I mean they're probably gonna make some more acquisitions if they do make the trade for Chris Archer but yeah I mean other than Miguel Sano the lineup pretty struggled Max Kepler was okay same with Joe Maurer he was okay Colby Rasmus had to replace the injured Byron Buxton because there were a lot of injuries with this lineup including Brian Dozier he was out for a large portion of the season and so yeah the twins they hit a lot of home runs but didn't really do much else and that's basically it when it comes to it. And in terms of the Chris Archer trade, I will just say one thing, and it is if you're going to make the trade for Chris Archer, make sure that you know what you are going to do next. Don't just make the trade just because he's available, you know, quote unquote, if he were to be made available by the Rays, because it could result in disaster. It could result in disaster. It can result in just you having less prospects but since you have a ton of prospects in your farm system already you can probably get some value for either one of nick gordon or um i can't think of his name right now um nick gordon or jorge polanco because nick gordon was actually pretty good you know at least in this simulation i think he'll be pretty good in real life too brother of d gordon of course and you still have you know a bunch of prospects so I mean, Zach Granite, he could probably be better than, I mean, he could probably be a good trade piece at the very least, or, 
if you want to move on from Byron Buxton, you'll have Zach Granite. And you have Adalberto Mejia. So yeah, the Twins have a solid future moving forward. They just have to continue to build up properly and not do anything too crazy or too sort of, you know, out of the realm. Something that will just gut their franchise for the future or gut their franchise's future. But either way, that'll do it for this trade rumor video as I've been RJ West and I am saying so long.